today on Low Tech Garage. We are back with more JAG content, as promised. This is our 1996 XJS, and we are going to be doing the front brakes today. Now, we sourced the parts from PartsGeek.com. You can look up your model year and, uh, and body style of JAG there. They seem to have a pretty good selection, and the price is very reasonable. Uh, if you have a 1996 XJS like us, we'll show you the exact part numbers that we're using today. Uh, but worst case, just look up your uh, year, make, and model, and you'll be able to find them there. So for the front pads, we've got the 10403941. And for the front rotors, we have the 12120009. These are basically just standard factory replacements. They're not like performance upgrades or anything like that. And again, the cost is pretty reasonable. Uh, so I would say these are a decent option if you're just looking for a way to redo your brakes, have them all freshened up without breaking the bank. So as you'd expect, there's the standard practice of getting the front of the car in the air, but you gotta take the safety precautions first. Always make sure it's in park and set the e-brake. Obviously you wanna make sure you're on a flat surface if at all possible, and if there's any concern at all, you should also chalk the rear wheels. It's always safe to put something there just to stop it from rolling back or anything like that. Because we're in a flat garage, we're not doing that today, but when I would do this on my driveway, I absolutely would get some two by fours and chalk the back wheels. Let's get her in the air. Now, like most times, you'll want to crack the lug nuts just to get them loose uh, before lifting the front of the car, but not too loose. So it just clicked with me that I think this is the first low-tech service video that we've done at the new workshop. So huge milestone and also a great opportunity to tell you, as you've seen, we've made a lot of progress. If you like the content or you're going to follow this and learn something from it, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help us grow the channel. So if this was useful to you at all, please do that. And also drop a comment and let us know if you have any questions or if this video is helpful for you. So back to the car. Next up, jack the front up and get it up in the air. Now that you've got the wheel in the air, go ahead and take the lug nuts the rest of the way off and you can remove the wheel. And for reference, if you're using a socket, it is 23 mil. Now for this next part, you will be working under the car, so definitely use jack stands for safety. You definitely don't want to work under a vehicle with just a jack supporting it. Everyone should know that, and if you don't, you just learn something. So once the wheel is removed, you're going to be able to see this assembly right here. You have your brake rotor itself, but it has this piece right here, basically an additional hub, where you actually have bolts coming from the inside of the rotor to this adapter plate, which then attaches to the wheel. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually loosen these bolts right here from inside of the rotor. Now there's an access hole in the back here, which I'll show you in just a second. And essentially you want to rotate the assembly and get it to where you can get a 17 mil socket onto these right here. And it's best if you have a second person who can hold the brake pedal, and then you can basically just crack the nut. It'll make your life a lot easier to loosen these while they're still on the car, but not fully remove them, just loosen them. And for reference, that's what the access hole looks like in the back of the plate there. So James already has the socket on the next bolt. So basically, we're just gonna hop in and press the brake. All right, go for it. Now, it won't be too surprising to know that those uh, bolts can sometimes be a little bit seized. So while I'm holding the brake, he's actually using a rubber mallet just to try and shock them just a little bit to get them cracked. Um, so either using a lever or just a little bit of a shock just to free up those threads is a great way to do it. Now there's a good chance that your caliper bolts that are on the back, the mounting bolts for this, uh, might actually put up a bit of a fight, and access can be a little bit tricky in here. So it does make sense sometimes to actually remove the nut from the tie rod here, and then basically uh, free up the little ball joints at the end there, and that allows you to move this assembly independent of everything else, so you can get a little better access with like a breaker bar or something like that. All right, so the pickle fork did the, uh, the job nicely. So if you're having trouble to where you can't just necessarily tap the side of this and drop it out, which most of you probably won't be able to do that, to be honest, um, we weren't able to, uh, but the pickle fork was able to separate that nicely. So as you can see, we've now been able to rotate the hub, which gives us way better access to the hardware on the back of this thing. And here we get our first view of just how bad the pads were on this. I mean, you can see it's eating into the spring clip there. So uh, yeah, that's probably the source of the uh, grinding and squealing. So now with our better access and a 19 mil socket and a breaker bar, we're gonna free up these calipers. And fair warning on ours, these were incredibly tight. So be prepared for this to potentially be a bit of a struggle. 
So now that we've freed up a little bit of the threads, um, it's a good opportunity to spray in a little WD-40 or a PB blaster if you have it, just because you want to minimize the risk of breaking a bolt or, you know, having something seize and really kind of doing some damage. All right, so it was a bit of a fight, but we pretty much have that uh, bottom bolt of the caliper out now. But one small tech tip, uh, when you're working with a caliper and you don't want to physically remove it from the car, thus having to bleed the brakes and all that, it's always a good idea to be able to hang the caliper up and out of the way and prepare to do that before you get it all the way off. And that's where these guys come in. You can usually find something to zip tie the caliper up and onto so that you don't have to disconnect the hose. Uh, and then that way you can you know, actually get to the, uh, the brake pads and get it out of the way of the rotor without having to disconnect the actual line. Now, if your rotor is as badly grooved as ours is, which we believe this might actually be the factory rotor, um, you may have an issue pulling the caliper off uh, because the pistons and the pads are sitting inside of that groove and don't want to let go. So you can try tapping the caliper with a rubber mallet to free it up, but if that doesn't work, because we are replacing this rotor, we're able to get basically a little uh, pry tool in between here and basically pry the caliper off, and that'll kind of force the pistons back in and get it out of the way. Now, if you're not planning on replacing your rotors, you don't want to kind of put pressure on them like we are here. Obviously, we are replacing them, so it doesn't matter that we put pressure on the rotor itself because this one's going in the trash. Obviously, we're just being careful not to damage the caliper itself during this process. All right, with a little bit of encouragement, the caliper has come off, and you can see right here where the pads were sitting, and they really did not want to come up over this lip, but we were able to encourage them off. Uh, an interesting thing that we discovered after the fact, so be careful with this, is that these actually have a looped hard line instead of a soft line like more modern brakes. So you're not gonna have much wiggle room actually when it comes to moving this out of the way. So now what we were able to do, because we removed the nut from the, uh, the tie rod here, we actually set the caliper down on that. We have a zip tie through here, looped around there so that it can't fall. That'll allow us to work on replacing the pads with it in situ and also take the rotor off uh, without us having to move it out of the way too much. Now, a lot of the technology on the XJS is actually older tech, so these are actually more of a spindle-mounted uh, kind of hub-style brake. So you actually want to remove the dust cap from the center next, and you're actually going to remove the nut from the center there and pull the wheel bearing out and slide the whole assembly off. So you can see here, we're just using a chisel or you can use a flat blade screwdriver to tap in between the dust cap and the actual hub and start it that way, and then you can pop the cap off. Once the cap is removed, you'll see you basically have a kind of locking nut style thing here. So you want to remove the lock pin or the, I guess it's a cotter pin. And once that's out, then you can unthread the, uh, or remove the cover and then uh, undo the nut here. And then there's a washer behind it that you're also going to want to remove. And that's what retains the outer part of the wheel bearing. So basically, if you haven't done one of these before, you just want to bend it straight so that you can then pull it through the other side. <laughs> Gloves. Yeah, this is why I don't wear gloves. <laughs> You'll want to make sure you slide this cover off before attempting to remove the nut. Don't put a wrench on that. The nut itself is a 24 millimeter, and it's actually not done up overly tight because, again, this is part of the actual wheel bearing. So there is, you know, it's just nipped up to hold the wheel in place. Um, so you should very easily be able to remove that. Now we're going to remove this outer retaining washer, and behind that should be the outer part of the wheel bearing. All right, well it kind of jumped out at us, so be prepared to cash it because it comes out very easy. Um, so after the washer was removed, a gentle tug on this popped the wheel bearing right out, and like I said, be ready to catch it because it came flying. Um, and we did catch it, so it didn't get on the ground or get any dirt in it or anything like that. But once that's off, you can literally remove this whole assembly. And this is the part where you'd be thankful that we cracked these nuts while they were still on the car because we're now going to remove these the rest of the way. That will allow us to actually separate the hub assembly off of the rotor itself uh, and then we can re-bolt that onto the new rotors and then reassemble everything from there. And don't lose your little spring washers. And with those bolts removed, the rotor should lift right off. There is no better feeling than putting new parts back into a vehicle. So this is one of the new rotors ready to go back in. Uh, but you'll notice there's this oil on a rotor. So anytime you're doing brakes, you're going to want to clean this whole thing down with brake parts cleaner before putting it in because otherwise that can really uh, mess with your pads and how they bed in. So again, brake parts cleaner, clean the whole rotor before putting it back in.
And if you're using brake parts cleaner in an enclosed space, please make sure to use it sparingly and then ventilate the area afterwards. Uh, you definitely don't want to uh, start to get a little dizzy. That's not so fun. So the oils wipe off very, very easily with just a small spritz of brake parts cleaner. Um, you know, you'll see right here, just a little dab of it goes a long way when you're using cloth. If you're trying to just rinse it off with uh, the cleaner on its own, you'll have to use a lot more. So uh, it kind of makes sense just to give it a wipe. And now time to put the new rotor onto the hub. And of course, there's always some excitement. So an interesting note about these rotors is that when we went to put them back on, the inner opening of them is actually smaller than the ones that we... So I'm referring to this inner opening right here being smaller on the new ones. And what that means is basically that it will not clear the ABS ring on the hub. The good news is the ABS ring is removable. So we are very, very lightly tapping it off. Uh, you can use a uh, you know straight like screwdriver or we have this convenient little angle pry bar here that's doing a nice job and we're just going slow and steady and we're working our way around the outside just a little bit at a time and that'll open up enough space for the new rotor to go on all right so when we last left you we had incorrect parts uh, we have resolved that we sent those back to parts geek and let them know hopefully they'll change that on their website uh, but for the time being, we did successfully get the correct parts from Rock Auto. So we're going to show you what those part numbers are. Uh, that way you can be confident that they will work for your Jag. So here are the rotors. Uh, this is the ones that we sourced. We have tested and they do seem to fit on the hub assembly nicely. And here are the pads. These are the correct shape. So basically that is your part number right there. Um, so yeah, again, Rock Auto came through on this one. So feel safe buying these or similar items and they will work. So uh, when we left off, James had originally removed the ABS ring to see if we could get the incorrect rotor to fit before we uh, honestly knew it was 100% incorrect. Uh, he's just put that back on by tapping it with a rubber mallet. So basically, um, if you do end up removing or needing to replace your ABS ring, that's the way to do it. You can just tap it right back on with a rubber mallet and it is all good to go. So he's just threading the bolts back in and they have their little uh, spring washers on them as well. And uh, once that's done, we can start getting them back on the car. So while we're working on this, I do have a basic question for our viewers, and it's a preference question. Since we've got them right next to each other, are you more of a V8 fan, or are you more of a straight 6 fan? Tell us in the comments below. Or bonus answer, are you a V10 fan? So these are the, uh, the new pads here, and if you want to talk about getting your money's worth out of a set of pads, this is what we took out. There was basically no friction material left. So this should make a lovely upgrade to the braking. So when it comes to uh, lubricant for the uh, the pads and all of that, kind of like the anti-squeak stuff, uh, we've had good luck with this Silglide stuff, um, so that would be our recommendation. Uh, but basically when you're doing the back of the pads and the slide pins, just make sure that you do uh, lubricate those using something similar to this. So we've reattached the uh, little spring piece here, and you want to make sure that the uh, long side goes on the same side as the friction material here. Alright, so it was a little bit fiddly and it was tough to film, but we're going to show you exactly what we did. So basically the spring clips that are in right here, uh, you can see how we've got them bent and that allows for the, uh, the slide to go through. Uh, and these, these slide pins actually go in from the inside of the car towards the outside of the car. Uh, and basically you want the spring to be bent uh, on the inside of that and putting a little tension on it. You do the same on this spring here, through the pad and on, uh, through the other side into the caliper again. And then you got your little arc clip right here, which pins the, the pin itself in place and stops it from being able to back out. All right, so now those are in. We're going to put the, uh, the rotor assembly back on and slip the caliper with the new pads back over the rotor. It's going to take both hands from both of us, so we won't be able to film that very well, but we will walk you through what we did momentarily. All right, so we have it back together. So we're going to walk you through what we did because that uh, was definitely a handful and would have been extremely challenging to film. Um, so essentially... We got the, uh, the caliper assembly slotted over the rotor. Um, and when you're putting the rotor assembly on, if you're doing this by yourself, you may want to get the rotor assembly on and get the, um, uh, the outer uh, bearing and the, the washer and nut just threaded to kind of finger tight to pin it in place. Um, and then basically when you slot the caliper on, down the back here, the mounting points where these bolts go, let me see if I can get some light on this for you where the bolts that mount the caliper go, those two guys, um, make sure that they overlap each other and don't crash into each other. That was something we ran into where they were kind of bumping into each other and we couldn't get it to seat 
but by moving it back ever so slightly, it slid the rest of the way in and we were able to get the bolts through. The longer bolt goes on the bottom, shorter bolt goes on the top. Um, and those are a, oh yeah, this is three quarters, so 19 mil. Um, yep, and then so we had removed this clip. If you didn't remove that clip, then you don't need to worry, but we put that back on. Uh, and then we have since uh, just tightened this nut down properly. Uh, obviously, it doesn't have to be too tight because it is a bearing. And then uh, we slipped the little cap on here and we put our um, cotter pin through and it is basically ready to go. We just got to put that little dust cap back on. And definitely don't forget to reconnect your tie rod end. And that's the tie rod nut going back on. We just poked it back through and uh, gonna tighten her up now. All right, we are gonna work on the other side now. Uh, I don't think there's any need to film that because it should be the same as what you saw on this side. So uh, hopefully this was helpful for you to see how the assemblies work on this. It is a little different than a more modern car. Uh, what with having kind of the whole hub assembly that comes off with the rotor and just a couple other small details like that. The style of the pads was different as well. Um, but again, now that you've seen it, it is a very straightforward process with only one or two extra steps compared to a normal brake job. So we hope this helped. And uh, I would say, you know, um, as always, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, All right, well that was fun. Our compressor wanted to say hi as well. Uh, and in case you ever wonder if we're professionals doing this in a studio versus just a couple dudes, that hopefully answers your question. Anyway, please consider liking or subscribing. Uh, obviously, if this video helped you, please like the video. Please drop us a comment as well. We wanna make sure the algorithm sees it and shares it with other people. And of course, if you like JAG content, please subscribe to the channel. We got more content coming up on the XJS here. And we got some more coming very, very soon on the XJR. A lot of you have been asking for it and it is coming. The parts are here, the tools are here. Uh, so yeah, very, very soon, XJR is officially going under the knife. We're going to do some very cool, exciting uh, maintenance, but also some upgrades to it as well. So we're signing off for today, but we'll see you at the next one.